And how's it going guys, Joshua Lefemi here live from LA. And in this tutorial, we're gonna have my bro Herman Huang, AKA Coffee Liquor, show us how to make this incredible shutter drag effect in After Effects. Guys, we are currently in another creative week and it's sponsored by Envato Elements. You can actually get a free month of Envato Elements in the link below, but more on that a little bit later. Coffee Liquor is gonna be releasing one video every day this week diving into the incredible world of VFX. Coffee Liquor is an extremely talented VFX artist based out of Vancouver, Canada. Now in the link below, there's actually a project file that you can download so you can actually do the tutorial with me in real time. Try this though, watch this tutorial all the way through once, just sitting back and relaxing and soaking it in and then download the project file and then watch it a second time and then actually do the tutorial with me while editing with the project file. Herman, the floor is yours. Thank you as always for the sick introduction, Josh. How's it going? We're gonna be learning how to do this shutter drag like effect that I did over here. Now this was initially inspired by anime like Akira and other ones where they would have this glowy eye trail effect. And shooting with slow shutter has actually been quite popular recently in music videos from artists like Travis Scott or The Weeknd. And once you know how to do this, you can apply it to a wide range of videos. So let's get into what you actually need to shoot and what to do with your camera. Now keep in mind that whatever that you're filming, the brighter parts of your image are going to be what trails. So in this case, I put some red reflective tape that I bought off Amazon just taped to my glasses because no one does that. That's my way of being unique, I guess. And also the white parts of my hat would trail nicely. Now, if you've seen some dope slow shutter photography before, and then you'll notice that there are these awesome light trails from moving cars during street photography or streaks from flying sparks. So a lot of this is experimenting. You could buy some LED glasses and put them on and do something similar to what I did. Or you could go out at night and go to a busy street and shoot over there to get some awesome slow shutter as well. So what do you actually need to shoot? So there's two shots that you'll need to take one in slow shutter and one in a more normal shutter speed. So for the first shot, you wanna slow down your shutter to something really slow. And then you're gonna shoot your uh, light trails or whatever bright that's moving in your image. And that's gonna be what has that trailing effect later in post. Now the second shot that you need to do is gonna be in normal shutter, something like one over 50 if you're shooting in 24 frames per second. So once you have that, you have two clips that you're ready to go. And if you wanna follow along, but you don't have a camera and you wanna try this out, then you can always download the project file that is in the description below. Let's go ahead. I, I'll, I'll wait. You download it? All right, so you're ready to rock and roll. Let's get into After Effects and learn what to do. So at this point, if you've downloaded the project file in the YouTube description below, then you can follow along in After Effects and you'll have two clips, one shot in a normal shutter speed and the other shot in a slower shutter speed. So as you can see, we have two clips. If I play this through, looks pretty normal. And we have the slow shutter one where it looks a lot more blurry, so we have more motion blur. So what's gonna happen now is we're going to take one of these clips, we're going to drag it down to this icon, which creates a new composition. We're gonna call it shutter drag main comp, keep things organized in my tutorial bin. And then we're going to put my slow shutter on top. And right now you have the luxury of using these two clips that are timed correctly so that the actions match each other. So as you can see, if I were to change the opacity by hitting T and then bringing it to, let's say 35%. You can see what's on top and also what's underneath. You can see that the motion basically matches one another, except there's a slight delay because I want it to feel like there's a bit of a draggy effect with a slow shutter speed. So this isn't how you do the effect, but I just wanted to show you that the timing is correct for these footage. I'm gonna change the opacity back to 100 and then we will get started. So no matter what clips that you're using, you don't need to time them perfectly, but you'll want to overlap the slow shutter speed on top of the normal shutter speed footage. But right now we're gonna rename the clip so it's a little bit easier to follow along so we're not easily confused even though there's two clips. Okay, it's for me so that I don't get confused. We're gonna rename the bottom one normal. And then we're gonna name the top one to slow. So we're gonna change the blending mode of the slow clip to lighten. And what this does is it's going to take the lighter parts of the image and then show it overlapped on top of the footage underneath. And this is already looking pretty interesting. If it's a brighter image, such as neon lights or passing cars with their headlights, then this would be even more apparent. Now, in this case, I don't want it to overlap around my hoodie over here because this looks a little bit messy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a mask, take the ellipse tool, and then I'm going to click the slow footage so that I'm actually gonna create a mask instead of a shape layer. And then I'm going to only include the parts that I want this 
draggy shutter effect to be applied to. Now I'm going to hit F so that brings my mask feather. That way it's not just a sharp edge along my mask. We're going to do something like 150. You can always change it according to your image. And then maybe I'll add a couple points here by hitting G and then just clicking on my mask. So then adding new points and we will just mess around with it until it's something that I'm happy with. So something like this is not too bad. If I play it through, as you can see, it's only affecting the parts with my face and my hat and the red reflective eyes. Now, before we continue, if you're liking the video so far, please check out my Instagram page at Coffee Liquor and you can see what I've been working on. Shoot me a DM if you want to chat or if you've got any questions as well, because I'd be more than happy to reply back. All right, let's continue. Now, this is looking pretty neat so far. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an echo effect. So I'm going to click the slow clip. I'm going to hit control space bar to bring up a plugin that is free from Video Copilot called Effects Console. I totally recommend using it because it saves a little bit of time from going to the effects and presets panel over here and then looking for your effects. I can just directly type in echo. And then we're going to change the echo operator to maximum. And it'll take the maximum amount of pixels to echo as opposed to using this adding blending mode, which made it too bright as you could see before. And then we're going to change a couple of these parameters. So number one, we're going to change the number of echoes. I'm going to say maybe like 10. And then there's a decay, which I want to happen because I want the echoes to gradually decay. But I totally encourage you guys to experiment with these parameters to see what looks cool to you. So if I play this through now, it's not too much different. It's not too noticeable, but I can change the echo time over here to something a little more draggy like this. All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break and I'm gonna tell you about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. And then you start seeing the effects of it a little more. And you can play around with this. You can, you can go crazy. Like I can just do this for example's sake so you can see what it's doing and it's taking different times from the shot to echo. So this is already an interesting effect, but I'm going to reverse it by hitting Control Z to undo what I just did. And it is as easy as that. Congratulations, guys, you are done your effect. Now there are some optional things that you can do to make it look even cooler. Uh, one of the things I love adding to my videos is some glow effect because as you can tell from my previous tutorials, if you watched them before, I'm like a moth, I like glowy things. Now the only real difference that I did for this post is that I added a desaturation to it and I also added an RGB effect. And without getting too into it, all I did was duplicate the footage three times and then shift the channels so that it would take the red from the red, green from the green, blue from the blue, and then offset the position. There are a lot more in-depth tutorials on this on YouTube if you just search it up. However, if you'd like to see it on the Olufemi channel, then maybe we'll fit one in. So that's all there is to it. This awesome effect can be applied to numerous things. Could be your music video or even a narrative piece if someone were to I don't know, whack someone else in the head and showcases their frame of mind. Maybe they're dizzy or disoriented. So really the possibilities are endless. And I encourage you to try it with different objects, different light sources or different subjects, and then just experiment. Like that's the fun in filmmaking, right? So that is it guys. Stay tuned for the next tutorial from both Josh and myself and check out my Instagram if you haven't done so already at Coffee Liquor. And until the next one, back to you, Josh. Herman, thank you so much for yet another incredible VFX tutorial. Please make sure to watch all the other incredible tutorials that we have in this month's Creative Week with Herman Huang. I got two more videos for you to check out right here. Remember to get your free month of Envato Elements in the link below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.